Hi there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Bill Meck. Welcome to this, the very first, the inaugural, the, the uh, unique for the moment, LAX 18 conversation here. It's a digital conversation that we are doing. And today we are going to be talking about the anniversary of what was one of the most significant weather events in Lexington's weather history. We're talking about the upcoming anniversary, the anniversary of the Masterson Station tornado. It occurred on May the 27th, and again, this is going to be the 13th anniversary, so it's May the 27th of 2004. It was a, an, a day that was not dissimilar from other days we've seen. We saw the warm and humid conditions during the day. We saw thunderstorms developing during the evening, but there was just something different about that day as things continued to evolve. And on that day, Nancy Cox and I were live on the air as these storms began to approach Lexington. It's being called the worst tornado to ever hit Lexington. If you're in the northern half of Fayette County, get to shelter now. What was interesting about that particular day, our Max Track Live Doppler, which has, you've come to know so well through the decade and a half, it was brand new at that point. We really didn't know what the capabilities of the Max Track were. And with it, we, we saw the development of this storm before anyone else did. It, it was really showing the value of what a truly live radar does. And it's also very close to the radar site, so the, the information, the data we were getting was hyper accurate. We were down to basically 200 meter resolution, being able to see storms coming together. The evolution of that day, what we saw was a line of thunderstorms that came down from the northwest. A tornado watch had been issued up to our northwest. As the storms were approaching Lexington, you had a line of thunderstorms coming in from the northwest, but then there was an individual cell that developed in Jessamine County and was moving against the flow. We saw those two storms come together, and when that happened, that's when the storms began to really intensify, and that happened in the McConnell's Trace area and then eventually the Masterson Station area of Fayette County, just on the northwest side of Lexington. It was a storm, as we saw it develop, we had an all-hands-on-deck approach. We had reporters that were out all over the place, including a couple of very special folks who have since moved on from Lexington. But on that particular night, they were part of not only our coverage, they were also part of the story. Joining me now on the phone from Ohio in her new phase of life, Heather higdon Lupian. Heather, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Bill. It's so good to hear your voice and, and to be back in touch with my LEX-18 family. Well, that would, again, we're so happy to have you back again, and you know, life has been treating you well up there. But let's go back to that night, May the 27th of 2004. You and Chris lived in Masterson Station. Tell us how that night developed for you, starting from you getting the call to, to come to work. You know, it was a, it was a night like any other, um, and I didn't really think anything of it when Chris was, Chris was called out first. And um, I was in the middle of cleaning the house, actually, if you can believe that. And then <laughs> I was called out. And uh, Chief Photographer Brian Gilbert actually came to pick me up. Uh, we went back to the station, and when he and I were over close to the station, that's when it got really intensely bad. And we drove back out. We, we didn't make it all the way to Masterson Station. We stopped before, and we, we shot, you know, what would be uh, an as-live shot. We captured some of the emotion of what was happening and what was transpiring and brought that back to the station and was actually at the station when um, Kathy Stone, the assistant news director, came in and, and told me that I, I needed to go back home. Lee Cruz, I guess, had contacted the station because he was a neighbor at that point and uh, let them know that our house had been hit. So okay. Brian Gilbert drove me back out to the site and that was just, that was the moment that I that I saw the damage. Yeah, what, in fact, what we had, had a group happened. at that time called the Masterson Mafia. You and several of the other folks. We had a, Ryan Lemon, yeah. when he used to work here, was also <laughs> part of that. That's how we knew something bad was going on. We were already live on the air and talking about that storm coming into the northwest side of Lexington. And we got a call from Ryan that he saw an air conditioner flying by. And it's oh like, my oh my gosh, we knew that something serious was going on. So, okay, now describe as you are coming up to what was your house, you know, what were, what were you feeling when that happened? You know, um, I think I went into shock, a little bit of shock. And I just remember walking through the front door and the walls being ripped and everything being covered in blown insulation. And it was just, um, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare, Bill. And I remember walking outside and Chris running up to me 
and us just embracing. We just embraced because, thank God, we were not at the house. And that, and, and we have felt so blessed. And, you know, we didn't have any family in the area, but yet we found out that we did because so many people um, from Channel 18 came to our, to our rescue. I mean, we spent the night that evening uh, with Lee and Elizabeth Cruz as the rain just poured on our ripped open house. And every, everyone from the station really just, they took care of us. They took care of us as their own. You were one of those people. You know, you were there with me. Um, and and we felt really, we, we left what was a natural disaster feeling so blessed, blessed um, beyond measure. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, wasn't the, one of the walls that caved in, that was would have been your bedroom, correct? Yes, it was the master bedroom where the worst of the damage actually happened and, and it was it was completely caved in on just toppled over over the bed now you see the damage there and keep in mind this damage occurred in the matter of a couple of minutes so what's the process then for you as someone you know we'll take you out of your reporter mode here just you as as, as a human as as you're trying to rebuild what were the stages that you went through after that Oh, uh, I mean, you um, <laughs> probably every every stage you can imagine. You're you're in disbelief. You're in shock. Then the reality sets in, and you have to rebuild. And the rebuilding takes so so long because it's not just the structure that you lost. It, it's just a a sense of security. And I mean, you know yourself. Every storm thereafter, I think I was texting you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or yes. trying to get in contact with you personally. Bill, am I going to be okay? And, you know, Bill, even now here in Cincinnati, uh, when a really bad storm rolls in, I, I, I feel that kind of post-traumatic, you know, yeah, well, I, I get nervous. Go ahead and say I you, get very you, nervous. It's, it's, it's a PTSD kind of thing. I mean, you, they talk about it with the soldiers coming back, but, no, you've been through a similar shock there. Now, you're up there in Cincinnati. What, what do you do now when you hear there's a tornado warning? What, what, do you, what, is you, what do you do, and then what's your advice to other folks? We have a very solid basement, <laughs> yeah, and call. we find it immediately. We, we grab our, our 10-year-old. They're now 10 years old, our twin boys, Eli and Oliver, and our dog, Francis, and we're all in the basement, and we're watching weather. And we are, <laughs> we, we are doing everything, Bill, that you preach because we did see, um, you know, you take your job so seriously, and we saw why, because it is life or death, um, and it's it's very vitally important what you do and the service that LEX 18 provides to that community. So yes, we, we everything that you've ever suggested, that's what we're doing every bad storm. Oh my goodness, Heather, it is so good to hear your voice again. Please give my best to Chris. Absolutely, and tell everyone there, I send them a gigantic hug and a, and a big, we miss you. Absolutely. That's Heather Higdon Lupian and coming to us from Cincinnati, former reporter here at LAX 18. As we are talking about, again, the anniversary of this storm, what I can tell you from the days after when I was up there, Heather mentioned the, the blown insulation that was around. I don't ever want to see blown insulation ever again because it was everywhere. It was like it had snowed pink and white all over the place. That was part of it. But the other things, the remarkable things that we saw up there, as I was walking around up around Mabel Lane where the storm was at its worst, saw a two-by-four, just a piece of two-by-four wood that was impaled into the side of a car. I, again, just stuff you don't expect to see. But the, really the most amazing story was as I was touring some of the damage, just kind of walking around and talking to folks, one of the firefighters who was working on the house that had the worst damage, and this was right at the top of the hill there up there on Mabel, uh, put, called me into the, the, the house. And again, keep in mind, most of the house is gone. The roof is wide open going through the, the kitchen there. There is not much left to this house. He pulled me back through all that and took me back to one of the back bathrooms. As we went into there, and again, keep in mind, the roof is gone. But we opened up the, the little linen closet that was inside that bathroom. When we opened the linen closet, the sheets were folded on the shelves, and there was a little glass figurine sitting on one of the shelves there. It had not been touched. This is why we tell you to find those interior rooms. Keep in mind, the rest of the house is basically gone. But that one place, it's as though the tornado didn't happen. Obviously, technology has changed dramatically. It had changed dramatically for us on that night. This occurred about 10 o'clock at night, a little after 10, actually, uh, on that Thursday night when, it, when those storms came roaring through. Uh, with the Max Track being new then, again, we weren't really sure what it was capable of. We found out that night what it could do. Ironically enough, a couple weeks beforehand, I was part of a seminar 
uh, that was talking about severe storm development, and part of the tutorials that we were getting from that seminar was on cell mergers, and that's indeed what, saw, what we saw happen. So, you know, we're always learning. We're always trying to bring that knowledge to you. And when we do say that there are tornado warnings, you know, it's, it's serious. Yeah, there are a lot of false alarms. When we get break in for programming, you know, that comes from the Weather Service. Tornado warnings, we don't issue them. We don't come on and say tornado warning. In fact, that night, even though there was no tornado warning for Fayette County when those storms hit, we were on the air. We knew something bad was happening, especially when we started getting the reports in, but we never said tornado was going through Masterson Station. That's for me, is 30 years of training waiting to say tornado until the Weather Service says tornado. But we can warn you that dangerous weather is coming, and that's what we can see exclusively on the Max Track Live Doppler. So again, severe weather season comes and goes every year. Tornado warnings, they don't mean go out on the porch with your cell phone trying to get pictures. They mean get to a safe place. You heard the story there from Heather that you know, when she hears a warning now, she's, she's been through it. She knows that these storms, that they can change lives literally like that. So again, these are indeed life-threatening, life-changing situations. So this is it. This is our first LAX 18 digital conversation. We want to thank Heather Higdon for uh, joining us on this particular one. We'll have these periodically as we go through time, exclusively on this internet. So we hope to, uh, to have you come and visit us often. For now, I'm Chief Meteorologist Bill Mack.